Good afternoon. It is the press conference of International Election Observation Mission to present joint preliminary findings and conclusions on the parliamentary elections held yesterday. My name is Irina Sabashuk. I am Head of Administration for Election Observation of the OEC Parliamentary Assembly and I will be moderating this press conference. The statement on preliminary finding and conclusions will be delivered by Ignacio Sanchez Amor, Special Coordinator and Leader of the Short-Term OSC Observer Mission, followed by Liliane Maury Pasquier, Head of the Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly Delegation, Geir Jorgen Beckevold, Head of the OSC Parliamentary Assembly Delegation, Heidi Hautala, head of the delegation of the European Parliament, and Ambassador Jan Pettersen, head of the OECE or DEAR long-term election observation mission. The panelists will present their statement, and that will be followed by the question-answer session, open for journalists only. Mr. Sanchez Amor, you have the floor. Thank you, Mrs. Savasho. Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for attending this conference. First, I want to thank the people of Armenia and the authorities for their warm hospitality. The 2nd April parliamentary election were well administered and fundamental freedoms were generally respected. Despite welcome reforms of the legal framework and the introduction of new technologies to reduce the incident of electoral irregularities, the elections were tainted by credible information about vote buying and pressure on civil servants and employees of private companies. This contributed to an overall lack of public confidence and trust in the elections. Elections day was generally calm and peaceful, but marked by organizational problems and undue interference in the process, mostly by party representatives. Yesterday's election marked a first step towards establishing a new political system in Armenia, but change cannot happen overnight. All reforms require behavioral change. If Armenia wants to establish a strong democracy, political parties need to display greater maturity and let go of the practices of the past. We reach these pre preliminary conclusions Despite its <laughs> We ask the Commission. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. 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 Okay.
Procedural omissions. As I already mentioned, reform is a never ending process. I encourage, we all encourage, the parliamentary majority and the new government to pursue the efforts to transform the country's political culture in partnership with the opposition, civil society, and the international community we represent here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez Amor. Now I give the floor to Ms. Liliane Maury Pasquier, head of the Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly delegation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, as head of the delegation of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, I'm pleased to share with you some conclusions on our election observation mission. As you might know, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe has organized one month ago a pre-electoral mission and came back to deploy on election day 24 members throughout the country as part part of the International Election Observation Mission. We fully endorse the preliminary findings and conclusion of this mission, and I thank all my colleagues present for their dedicated work and cooperation. There's little doubt that since the last time when the citizens of Armenia voted, and I'm in mind not only the referendum on the Constitution, but also the previous parliamentary elections, efforts have been made including through logistical improvements to raise the quality of the electoral process. The authorities should be praised for working to inform the electorate on this new, quite complex electoral legislation. But it's a pity that despite all the legal and organizational changes, these elections did not remove long existing doubts about about the reliability and integrity of electoral processes in the country. The new use of new technologies in the voting process cannot alone restore confidence in elections. And this, as everybody knows, is crucial in a genuine democracy. As my colleagues from the delegation of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe noticed, the general environment for these elections was not satisfactory. There was no debate in the media, and the electoral campaign was oriented towards personalities rather than programs. Pressure has been put on people both before and during the election day. For example, for example, there were attempts to convince voters that their choice will be known with consequences for them. 
can say that we felt that fear and resignation were somehow stronger than hope. As the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe and the Venice Commission already legislation is only effective if there is a political commitment to implement it in good faith. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. I pass the floor to Mr. Guy Jorgen Beckewold, head of the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly delegation. Please. Thank you, Irina. I agree with uh, my colleagues, uh, what my colleagues already said, and I want to just add a few additional uh, comments on behalf of the OECE Parliamentary, uh, Parliamentarian Assembly. Uh, our delegation included more than 64 people from 23 uh, countries, including 51 uh, members of parliament from across the OSCE. As uh, elected uh, representatives, we parliamentarians have a personal interesting interest in uh, ensuring that elections are genuine and that their outcome is uh, uh, legitimate. Thanks to our intimate uh, experience in setting up and uh, competing in uh, elections, our part participation uh, brings context in and insight into uh, the process of uh, observing elections. Observers from my delegation agreed that the elections were generally well uh, at the ministry, uh, but uh, credible uh, information of vote buying and uh, pressure on voters uh, tainted the process. We welcome the intent to increase confidence in the system uh, through an inclusive reform of the legal framework, which addressed a number of previous uh, recommendations and the uh, introduction of new uh, technologies. However, we noted during our observations yesterday several issues which undermine the process, including tension outside polling stations, uh, overcrowding and poor queue control, and confusion surrounding the new polling uh, uh, procedures. We uh, encourage all the relevant stakeholders to take note of these shortcomings and to carry on with their efforts to improve election through uh, uh, concerted reform, training and voter education. I also want to underline that the new electoral law provides for greater representation of women and uh, uh, minorities. And uh, even though some parties say the difficulty to, uh, in finding uh, uh, minor minority candidates, 30% of the candidates were women. From now on, the gender quota applies also to the uh, distribution of obtained and uh, vacant seats. I'm glad that a great, greater number of our colleagues in the National Assembly will be women. Uh, I now uh, encourage uh, political parties to uh, empower them to bring about uh, transformative change in Armenia, uh, in Ameri uh, Armenian democracy and uh, society as a whole. Uh, thanks again to all those who warmly welcomed us in the polling station, uh, station yesterday uh, and uh, good luck with the future. Thank you. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Ms. Heidi Hautala, head of the delegation of the European Parliament, please. Thank you very much, Irina, and thank you for your hard work and your colleagues. Um, I'm very happy to address uh, you today as um, head of the European Parliament's electoral observation uh, mission to Armenia. And as a part of this mission, the European Parliament fully endorses uh, the preliminary findings and conclusions of this mission. Um, I 
would like to uh, take this opportunity to uh, thank my colleagues from the other parliamentary assemblies uh, for a very uh, efficient and constructive and fruitful cooperation. And I'd like to commend the excellent work by the ODIR during this mission. Uh, also, uh, I want to, like, uh, want to thank the EU delegation in Yerevan for their very strong support. The European Parliament delegation arrived in Yerevan on Thursday and received extensive briefings from the ODIR um, long-term mission and from the relevant stakeholders in these elections, including party representatives, media and civil society. Yesterday, uh, our uh, delegation spent the election day observing the voting process in Yerevan, Kotayuk, Ararat and Armavir. Uh, I want to add to the um, comments uh, made by my colleagues that um, the European Union strongly supported these elections by funding the introduction of new technologies such as the voters authentication device. We saw these at work during election day and noticed that they allowed to address some well-known concerns. The Armenian authorities worked hard to improve the electoral process through the, an inclusive dialogue with the opposition and civil society. However, let me also emphasize some areas for future reflection and thus uh, I want to reinstate what has been said before. Indeed, the new electoral procedure was complex and not always understood by the voters. Nevertheless, polling station staff made strong efforts to ensure a smooth process. But, uh, regrettably, the process was undermined by credible recurring information of vote buying, intimidation of voters, notably civil servants in schools and hospitals and employees of private companies, as well as of abuse of administrative positions. These are issues that are essential to solve in order to ensure that Armenian voters' confidence in future election processes. The involvement of civil society is key in this respect. These are also issues that will be addressed as part of EU-Armenia agreement, which was recently negotiated, and to which the European Parliament will need to give its consent, possibly this year or next year. Please rest assured that the European Parliament will work closely with the future Armenian National Assembly to support reforms and democratization in line with our commitments as part of the deepening EU-Armenia relations and for the benefit of all Armenian citizens. Thank you. Now I pass the floor to Ambassador Jan Petersen, head of the OSCE or Dear Long Term Election Observation Mission. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, as a fifth speaker, I will uh, certainly echo what my four colleagues uh, just uh, have said. We are uh, five different entities, but we quickly found ourselves on the same page and uh, we are in full agreement on uh, the preliminary findings and the statement which is uh, presented today. I would like to thank my colleagues for their uh, cooperation. My mission has uh, been here since the uh, 20th of February, which has allowed us uh, not only to observe election day proceedings, but uh, also to follow uh, closely uh, all important uh, aspects uh, in preparation of the uh, election day. We, um, I would like to thank uh, uh, the authorities, uh, meaning the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Central Election Commission, the numerous uh, interlocutors from parties, media, election officials, NGOs, experts, who have uh, contributed to our understanding uh, of the situation. These are our uh, preliminary findings. Within uh, two months, we will uh, present our final report with uh, recommendations. And uh, my team has not yet uh, finalized its work in, in uh, uh, Armenia. We are going to stay this week and the next week, which will allow us to follow the post-election developments, including the finalization of results and the handling of uh, any complaints and uh, appeals. The um, uh, preliminary uh, document deals with uh, all aspects uh, uh, observed. 
Uh, of course, it is uh, it uh, contains positive and uh, negative uh, elements, and I think that my colleagues have uh, have uh, described our main concerns uh, very well. So it's uh, really not for me to to uh, elaborate too much on this. But I would like just to highlight uh, a few uh, points. One of them is uh, the issue on, uh, of um, the secrecy of vote and uh, the vote buying issue. Uh, we see that in this election the situation has improved regarding the secrecy of vote. And I underline this because this is a very first uh, step towards uh, addressing the long-standing practice uh, of uh, vote buying. Uh, this issue, uh, the vote buying and the pressure voters, uh, those issues are certainly very high on uh, our uh, agenda. And you will see that uh, in, the, in our preliminary findings, the, word, the words lack of confidence uh, pop up, uh, pops up uh, quite uh, frequently, which means that this is something that needs to be uh, addressed. When it comes to the uh, election day, I agree with what has been said by my uh, colleagues. Uh, the election day was calm and peaceful overall. Voting procedures were generally followed and the VAD functioned effectively. This also comes, of course, something that we followed closely, as some interlocutors had some doubt about this from the beginning. But we must also record that the voting process was marked by overcrowding, by long queues, and by interference by party representatives and police in the, in the uh, voting stations. That uh, we had uh, overcrowding is perhaps uh, not very surprising. I mean, the, the changes were quite, uh, quite important, quite complex, and it uh, takes a while until uh, everyone is uh, confident we, and, and really know the new system. But it has to be, be said because it was an important part of how we saw the, the um, vote e election day. But as I say, this is just this is our report uh, today. We are going to stay in the country for another uh, almost two weeks and we'll be able to follow all, all post-election developments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we open the floor for the journalist. Please clearly state your media outlet you represent and name yourself. We would like to remind that the floor is open to journalists only. Please, lady in the... Yes. Second, Mr. Sanchez, I'm yeah, thank you. Listen, uh, an election is not just what happened in an election day. Election is a very long process. As you heard, uh, our team was here from the 20th of February. That means instead of looking for just a label in a, in a word, you have a complete report on what happened in every stage of the process. Then you can, you can examine it if the campaign, if the finance, if the, if the uh, formal complaints, uh, if the devices for identification, if the count. You have a very complex photograph of a very complex process. This is much more than trying to label uh, um, uh, election just uh, saying as other body says is free and fair or is not. This is so much uh, complex and you have a complex photograph of a complex process. Uh, just for saying uh, a couple of uh, adjectives, we don't send here 400 people 
for one month and a half. Thank you. Next question, lady in the third row. Susanna Petrosin, CivilNet. Um, do you cooperate with and take into account the results of local observer initiatives um, who had larger uh, missions on election day? Could you repeat the sure. question? Do you cooperate or take into account the results of local uh, observation missions who had larger, um, who covered larger areas and had a larger number of observers on election day? Oh, absolutely. Did you want, no, just for start here. I could start, but could I just ask you for a small favor first? And that is, please tell me in which language you are speaking, because it takes some time to get on the right channel here. So actually, I'm just now guessing what you 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 are uh, asked. So uh, if I get it wrong, you just uh, just uh, stop me. But I, I would say that um, the number of observers we have had on the ground, uh, long-term observers from uh, end of February, and the short-term observers, uh, those numbers are sufficient uh, to have a good uh, idea about uh, what went on. Uh, remember that uh, our observation methodology has been developed over more than 300 elections throughout the uh, OOC area. So uh, I think we can confidently say that, uh, that uh, what uh, we are reporting is simply what we, we uh, have seen. And we, have, um, we are, uh, do not just have anecdotal uh, contributions to our report. We have a, a thorough statistical evaluation of uh, all the observations. So I am feeling pretty confident that uh, what we are saying is something that we can defend. Oh, listen, uh, thank you, thank you, Jan. Listen, I think it's useful to have more voices or, or more, more people or bodies or NGOs observing the elections. But we do have to underline that our experience is 300 elections all over the OSC area. That means we have, we have the experience, we have our protocol, we have our statistics, we have our way of acting, who has been proved for several years. And we fully endorse that way of acting. It's just because we, have, we are using our, our means, our tools, is not any kind of lack of confidence on the work of other bodies. There are other bodies like the CIA, there are a lot of NGOs, about, about 30,000 uh, local observers. That's good for the nation. I think it's good, but we endorse absolutely the work of our team here because they are very professional and they have the meanings for having that number of people observing uh, to have a clear picture of what happened in all over the country. Thank you. The lady in the second row. Just a second. Duk nashetik vor kusak tutun nede harnvel en dragan gortun tazin yete karuvek nashek naev hat kapes vor kaal ka kanu jernen ait bisi az de tutun nete liyev harnvel ait protesin yev hat kapes vor bas tohum de kamarum aravel az de tik jov tavartan kayat mante sankyonit bas hasakadar moshnura kalsin. Let me start uh, for your final question. I think your, your country, and your authorities, your parliament did a great effort to conduct the reforms. I think it's to praise the, the constitutional reform. Having an electoral code of, with a broad agreement, political agreement, is a good thing. But I think you, you just, you as a, as a society, has to pass from the legal framework to the attitudes, to the behaviors. And we notice that even having a good legal framework for conduct election and even good devices and good tools for, for some, some parts of the, of the um, process, you have to change the, your way of acting, especially the parties, especially the parties who apparently uh, continue to act in a way that that legal frame is an indication to overcome. Uh, we have now, of course, when we heard uh, about the parties, uh, we, have, uh, we have information, and it's in, in our report, that what happened in the uh, campaign. It has been published, has been going to publish in the interim report. But listen, concerning the D-Day, uh, we noticed what happened outside 
uh, the premises of the of the polling station. People gathering, uh, people interchanging papers, people interchanging information, people showing uh, telephone. That's the way that you, as a journalist, perfectly know how it happens. And we know this also. But we are not asking to a person who is in that situation which party is representing. Okay. The lady in the second row. Microphone, please. You're searching for just a title, um, I, I could comprehend, but this, I have to repeat, this is a very complex procedure, it's a very complex uh, um, uh, way of acting. You have to um, understand that we have that kind of adjectives in every step of the patient. That means there are people who are acting more or, more or less freely on depending of your reading of our statement. But we do right here is what happened. And we are not in the mind of any elector to know if that conditions had drive or not to a, a uh, a kind of a vote of other. This is our picture of, of the election. As a, as a person, I have to add to my former comments: democracy is not democracy is not um, the election. Democracy is what happened between the elections, and you have to take care of that. Thank you. One more question, gentlemen here. Pazatitsun Radzukan, Arta Kambartsman, Harts Stalisem, Europa Kanhor Tarani Nekatsushin, Yes Ksankanai, Hishas Nelvors, Europa Kan Mutsuna, Mets at Vogumar and Erdrelas and Tritsunari Tapans, Kanskatsman Hamar, Yot Million Evroyev, Zesh Nerkatsusicha has done them, Despans Vitalski, Nasumer, Voriate, As and Tritsuner, Bavara and Zerak and Kalikner, Zerspasa Likner, Apa, and Arabutsun Kalini, Horats Nelu, Hastani, Evro. Pakan Mutsan Harabutsunere. Arten Nahna Kan Artsun Knerun and Alov, Yerekva and Ritsuner, Kavarkusuna Tesnelov, Karuk Artsuka Surasel, Testume Knara Vurusun Harabutsuner, Horasma, Yazer Spasa Liknera, Artsuka Taratsa. Yeah, thank you very much for this uh, question. Uh, obviously, the EU and Armenia are deepening their relations. As you know, uh, the, the so called comprehensive and enhanced partnership agreement has now been initialed. It, it's very likely to be signed uh, in Brussels in the Eastern Partnership Summit in November. And I would believe that, um, like so many times before, the audit recommendations uh, for the, the country in question, in this question, Armenia, will serve as an excellent part of, uh, of the agenda of implementation of that agreement. And I fully support what uh, Ignacio Sanchez Amor has said, that uh, Democracy is a never-ending process, and I think we are treading deeper on our common path, but we, we need to be very frank that uh, what we have seen is not enough, and obviously the implementation of this agreement will be a, a golden opportunity to also to address failures that have been seen through the lens of electoral observation. Thank you. Next question, the lady in the third row. Uh, I will ask in Armenian, Jean Napogosian, Civil Netayem. Shaunakelov, Gordon Kenet is making hearts in Vora and Patas Han Manat, took Neshetsik, Zanit Shatera, very shoot Neshetsin, Vod, Itere on itself, Zaineri, Ark, Voroshkusak, Suner, Asdel and Batsasaka, and Kerpov, and Trogneri, Zaini, Ravon Kivera. Kaurek Neshel, concrete Vorkusak, Suneri, Masina, Hos, Kushnera Karatun. No, we can't, because we have not uh, the proofs, as you say. We know that that happened, and everybody knows, everybody who, who knows how, what happened outside the premises of the, of the, and even before with some people even approaching to party headquarters to ask for any kind of help. And uh, some cases that have been registered um, are in our report, it is going to be published, and the names of the people involved and the provinces or the districts in which that uh, situation happened are in the report. Mr. Peterson. 
Could I just say a few words about how our uh, report has been, been worded? Because uh, as uh, uh, Sacha Bar has said uh, many times, uh, we are giving a nuanced picture, which means that uh, where we have uh, uh, enough material, uh, we might mention concrete parties in, in different contexts, uh, where we uh, do not, uh, we refrain from, from uh, doing so. When it comes to the vote buying, we are saying that we have uh, credible um, uh, observations that uh, it is going on, but it is uh, difficult to, to give an indication or, or to quantify uh, this issue. So that is as far as we, we can go. But I would also like to, to add that uh, the perception that this is going on is in itself a problem. And that is why we address it so clearly. Uh, we say that, uh, yes, a step has been taken when it comes to making the vote uh, secret. I think it's vitally important that the voters uh, uh, really feel confident that the vote is secret. That's the important point. And then we point to this very, very difficult area, and it's uh, simply for the um, political environment in this country to take this, this uh, further. Uh, we are giving an account of what we are seeing, but we are uh, uh, not making ranking lists of good to bad of different, uh, different uh, uh, contestants. Uh, whenever it is relevant, we, mention, we are concrete. Wherever we do not have the necessary background, we have to be uh, m uh, more general in the way we are uh, describing things. Thank you, and we take two more questions, please. Panorama M. Zer Kartikov is Hanutuner Hamarek and Arta Kankel and Rahatum Neri Vera Beria de Hagortum Nerin Hide. We note we don't we note a problem in your in respect of that. Uh, there is a lack of culture of formal complaint because the lack of confidence and because the cause we identify in the what is one of the things is going to be one of our recommendations citizens has to attempt to use the institutional way to address any problem and you have to use formal complaints on the cc on the judiciary on the, uh, the police forces because we noted that uh, despite having problems like everywhere, there are very few formal complaints. And it's identified, it's, the question is, has been uh, identified and has been addressed in our report more carefully than I could uh, elaborate just in this moment. Ambassador. That is, of course, the most important part of the question. I, I absolutely agree with what has been said. I just want to add that the complaints process is not yet over. And, and uh, that is why uh, it, uh, it is important that we, we are still here, so we will be able to give a complete account of uh, uh, what has happened and how it has been uh, addressed. Thank you. And the last question, please. Emil Danielian, Radio Free uh, Europe, Radio Liberty. I'll ask my question in English. Uh, were the violations, uh, irregularities uh, witnessed by your mission serious enough to affect the overall outcome of the elections? You have the overall uh, outcome. We tried to, to do any of the people uh, being here addressing some different issues and uh, you are to have in our report who is complex enough to address any of the of the issues this is the overall view on the election please the election is not just what happened in the polling station in the day of the election elections is a very complex process we, you have to address for having the picture for having the overall picture you have to attend any of that uh, of these uh, steps and uh, the opinions that we are delivering of on any of them. Thank you. Thank you. We would like to inform... Excuse me. 
Mr. Hautala. Yeah, if uh, this um, press conference is coming to its end, I'd just like to inform you about something that might be of interest, that the Foreign Affairs Committee of the European Parliament will uh, give its preliminary assessment through debate uh, on the elections uh, next Monday, the 10th of April, in the afternoon, and the, the meeting will be web-streamed, and we hope, of course, that as many of you who have an interest uh, to, to hear what the delegation has to say to, to support the, the preliminary findings, so that's all possible. Thank you very much. We'd like to inform you that the paper copies of this press release and the preliminary statement is available outside this meeting room. Thank you. Goodbye.